So some examples of exponential growth would be usually, well, populations tend to grow exponentially. Now, uh, that's kind of a simplistic case because usually populations are going to reach some sort of balance or maybe, uh, maybe a new predator comes into the scene or something like that and like, you know, aliens come and start eating or like melting all the humans or something so the population decreases or whatever, you know, some unforeseen events. But in general, we can say that it exhibits some exponential growth. So according to some website, population in Denton in 2008 was right there, 119,454. Okay, this was up 3.01% from the previous year. So if we assume that the population continues to grow at that percent every single year, I want to know what's the population of Denton gonna be in 2020. So we're just going to use an exponential growth because this is 3%, it's getting bigger 3% every single time. Um, and just make an estimate, what do we think the population is going to be in Denton in 2020? So speaking of 2020, what, how many years is that from 2008? So we got 2020, we're subtracting 2008 and we have 12 years. So this is gonna be the T value, okay? This 119,454, that's our original amount A, that's what we're starting with. And then finally our R value, written as a percent is 3.01%. So my equation then would be something like Y is equal to, start with the original amount, so 119,454. And then I'm going to multiply it in parentheses times that growth factor, which is one plus my, my rate, written as a decimal, so 0 0.0301. All of this raised to whatever power, however many times I'm doing this, and since this is years, 12 years, I'm gonna raise that to the 12th power. Okay, so let me just call up the calculator here because of course I'm not gonna be doing that by hand. So right here, turn that thing on, and let's get to calculating. Okay, so just type it in as you see it. 119,454. Okay, and now um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in parentheses. Uh, you don't need the parentheses here if you go ahead and add the numbers up. Like for example, if you just went ahead and went 1.0301, you wouldn't need the parentheses. Close them now since I did put them exponent and then type in your exponent of a 12. So here we are, we are projected at 170,000, uh, about 511. I'm sure there's a fractional amount of a person, um, ouch, to be that guy. So uh, 170,000, 511. That's our projection. Is it realistic? Well, we're basing this off of the fact that we think that it's going to continue to grow at 3.01% steadily every single year. And that may not be a realistic assumption, right? Because it, it's probably going to fluctuate. Maybe some new, um, some new opportunities arise and didn't. And uh, we have an influx of people and maybe it starts growing a little bit more. Or maybe some more opportunities lie outside of the Denton area and so people start moving out you know some things like that you just can't oh yeah there could be aliens as well okay so estimate the year uh, when the population of Denton Texas will be 1 million assuming its population continues to grow at a yearly rate of 3% uh, 3.01% so this time if I go back over here I don't know I, I do know the why I'm gonna make that uh, a million but I don't know this where this 12 is. That's going to be my variable. That's going to be my x. So my equation that I'm trying to solve for x then is a million, which I'm just going to write as 10 to the 6, is equal to, that was 114 or 19? 19. Whoa. 454 times 1.0. 3, 0, 1, all raised to the x power. I don't know what that x power is. Okay, trying to clean up that 3 because it looks terrible. 
So here's the problem. Do you know how to get rid of that x that's a exponent? The variable when it's an exponent? So whenever you solve an equation, you, you have to have inverses to undo what has been done. And so far, we haven't done any kind of inverse for exponentials. And that's what's going to be the next lesson. The next lesson is going to be all about that, which is logarithms. So we don't know how to solve this algebraically. So we're going to have to try to solve it graphically. What that means is you're going to take the left side of the equation and set that on the graphing calculator equal to y1. And over there on the right-hand side, set that equal to y2. And then you're going to have two graphs, and you're just trying to see where those graphs intersect each other. So let's give that a try. Let's pull up this calculator again. This time, let's go to y equals. And under the first one, we're going to type in 10 to the 6th. OK, so there's our first equation. That's the left-hand side of the equation that we're trying to find. And then over there on the right-hand side, 119, 454. And I still have the times 1.0301. Notice I didn't put parentheses this time. Oh, but I didn't put 1 either. That's going to be a problem. Second, insert 1. But I put it in the wrong place. Times 1. There we go. Raise to the x power. Hit enter. Okay, so now it's at this point you got to choose a window. And that's, I don't know, You got that's going to be kind of weird. So this x value... Uh, we don't know how many years this is going to be, but of course it's going to be bigger than zero. But let's say maybe it goes up to 20 years. Don't know. Let's just say 20 years. Okay. Uh, X, X scale, I usually divide that by 2, so let's go with 10. Uh, divide it by 10, let's go with 2. All right. Now the Y minimum, of course our population is going to be bigger than zero. And then it's got to be something that's bigger than... Um, 10 to the 6, which is a million. So why don't we do 2 times 10 to the 6. That should do it. And then make this 2 times 10 to the 5th. Now let's hit the graph, and let's see if we can see our business, see where it intersects. Is it going to intersect? Is it going to be on the screen? Is it? Is it? Oh. What does that mean? That means we need to go back to the window and make this x max value bigger. How about we go up to 50 years and make this a 5. Whoops. No. No. 50. And a 5. Let's try again. All right. Is it going to hit it? Is it? One more time. Let's make it 100. 100 years. Okay. I'm going to go by 10. I think, I think I'm going to get it this time. Bam, it hits it. Okay, so it has to be able to see it in order for it to find the intersection point. And that's under second calculate for second trace, the calculate menu. I'm going to choose five. It's going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. Just ignore the questions. Just keep hitting enter like three times, and then it'll finally tell you your value. So it looks like it's at 71.6 years. That's when we're going to be at uh, a million. So... 71.6 years. And this is from 2008. So 2008 plus this plus our 71. We're talking about 20, 79.6, maybe 2080. All right. So. Uh, now, on the other side of that, let's do some depreciation. Let's, let's say we buy ourselves a car, a new car, for $20,000, and we get a five-year loan on this thing. So that means that we're supposed to pay this thing off in five years. If the car depreciates in value at a, co a continuous rate of 15% um, per year, so we're, we're saying, okay, so every single year I lose 15% of its value, how much is your new car going to be worth after you finish paying that off? So in other words, in five years, how much is this thing going to be worth? So uh, I do the same exact formula here. And it's going to be y is equal to 20,000. But this time it's 1 minus the rate instead of 1 plus the rate because it's going to go down. This is 15%, which is 0.15. 1 minus that is going to be 0.85. 
raised to the uh, fifth power. So, calculator. Here we go. Let's just quit out of this. And no. And then type that thing in. And let's see how much our lovely new car is going to be worth. There we go. Times 0.85 raised to the fifth power. Now our car is only worth $8,874 and some change. So, 887411. Look at that. That's it's kind of sad, isn't it? Great Scott. $20,000 and then after you pay it off, it's worth less than half of what you paid for it. Okay. Speaking of that, assume that that car um Again, it continues to uh, depreciate 15% per year. I want to know in what year is it going to be worth exactly half of its original value. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to let you try to figure that out. Okay, were you able to pull that off? Here's the answer that you should have gotten. Look at that. So uh, what I did is I, I went ahead and I, I took half of that 20000 10000 of course. And so that's what the value of it is, the equation is supposed to be equal to, and you're trying to find x there. So unlike what I did on the previous exercise, I went ahead and divided both sides by 20,000 just because it's going to make it equal to a half, and that was easy to figure out. Okay, and then I make the left side equal y1, the right side equal y2, and whenever I do my graph like this thing right here, I can see the point of intersection it tells me is 4.265, blah, 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 blah. So I'll just round that to 4.25 years. Sad face because I haven't even finished pay to, paying it off and it's already worth less than half. Okay. All right, so that's about it on uh, this objective. Next one's all about money. It's all about money. Stay tuned.